Hello, Ninjarama here again, and I'm extremely excited to share this follow-up to my previous video about how to use the NDI SDK and Unreal Engine to composite real-time green screen footage for your project. I hope that this updated video will be even more helpful to you as I share some new techniques that will streamline the keying process and yield even better results. As a bonus, I'm going to show you how to quickly set up an HTC Vive tracker to control your virtual camera. This is something cool and I hope it will open up a lot of other ideas for you. In my last video, I showed you how to use the NDI SDK for Unreal Engine and how to grab an NDI source from the network and then stream it into the viewport. Also, I showed you how to chroma key your green screen footage using OBS and vMix. So today, I'm going to do things a little differently and show you how to achieve chroma keying right inside of Unreal Engine and ultimately cutting out OBS from the workflow completely. Additionally, I've added a second video source, so essentially we'll be running two unique and simultaneous NDI video streams from the network into our example project. So, without further delay, let's get started. Okay, this first part is for those of you who haven't seen the first video. Just jump on over to ndi.tv and download the NDI tools as well as the SDK. So in the NDI tools, there's a download link here. And this will jump you to the bottom of the page and you will see NDI tools for Windows and NDI tools for Mac. So download the appropriate one for your operating system. Next, jump over to the SDK and click download and at the bottom here you will find NDI SDK for Unreal Engine version 4.24 so we'll be using Unreal Engine 4.24 just click download and install this as well once you have installed the NDI SDK Go ahead and find the folder where it is installed. In my case, it's C Drive, Program Files, New Tech. And inside the New Tech folder, you will find the NDI SDK for Unreal Engine folder. And then inside this folder, you will find NDI Examples. And inside the Examples folder, you'll find Plugins. And then in the Plugins folder, you'll find the actual plugin and it is called NDI IO plugin. So right click and copy this and then you will look for your Unreal Engine installation folder and then we're going to copy this into the plugins folder. Okay, I've navigated to my Epic Games folder where Unreal Engine is installed and in my case it's the F Drive Epic Games Unreal Engine 4.24 and be sure you install this specific version of Unreal Engine. Now we're going to go into the Engine folder and then look for Plugins. And I've already copied this plugin in here. So in your case, you would just do right click and then paste or however you want to get it copied in here. And then we'll jump into Unreal Engine. Once you have your Epic Games Launcher loaded, just click over here to launch Unreal Engine 4.24. Once the Select or Create New Project window is open, just click here on Games, choose the blank template, and then here you can choose a directory where you want to save it. I'm just going to leave it at my default here and you can name this project wherever you want. And let's create the project. Once Unreal Engine has opened, you'll see this blank project here with a few uh, preloaded assets in here. What we're going to do is save this project and I'm going to name this my 
my map and you'll see it's created these two assets here. Next we need to ensure that our plugin is enabled. So if you notice down here at the bottom right you will see new plugins are available. So we'll click manage plugins and then you see the NDI IO plugin. Just tick this little box here that says enabled and it says this is a beta version blah 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 yes and down here we have another message that says that we need to restart so go ahead and hit restart okay so we've restarted and our plugin is enabled we'll just go ahead and close this so the first thing we're going to do is create a couple of assets here. One is going to be a material. So we're going to go to materials and textures and then we will choose NDI Media Texture 2D. If you don't see this option it probably means you haven't installed or enabled the NDI plugin so be sure you do that first. I'm going to go ahead and click this and I'll just leave it at the default name okay we're gonna create another asset here it's gonna be a media texture but we're gonna use the NDI specific texture here called NDI media receiver double click on the receiver when you see this window here it's called video texture we're gonna choose our texture 2D that we've created here. I'm going to create a plane so that we can map our video texture onto it. You'll notice that on the left pane here you see NDI. In the quick start guide it tells you to use this NDI receive actor. However I had issues with this it's not really necessary to use this and it doesn't really explain why you need to use this but I just found out that it has some limitations in terms of what parameters are available so for example I'll just drag it in here you'll see these parameters here there's not a whole lot that you can uh, specify here versus if I use a plane so when I use a plane have all these options available to me so I'm not really sure why this is so limited it still works but I'm gonna use this because this will make things a little more flexible for me so if you want to use this it's fine I'm not gonna use it I'm gonna use a basic plane okay let's rotate this thing so that it's perpendicular to the floor. So I'm going to hit this rotate button and rotate it up. All right. And I'm just going to eyeball this, but I'm going to stretch it out so that it's it looks almost like a screen. Try to get like a 16 by 9 ratio here. This this looks about right. Then I'm going to drag this texture onto here. In the quick start guide, if you go through it, it'll tell you to try and locate this material deep inside the content browser, etc., etc. I found that to be tedious and unnecessary, and this seemed to work better for my purposes. So I'm just showing you my shortcut. But you can follow the instructions if you want to, it's just a little confusing. So I'll drag this onto this plane and you'll notice that it created this material. Let's open this material and take a look at what's inside. You notice that there are two nodes in here. One is the new media texture 2D material and the other one is the texture sample. We're going to add another node in here. Go ahead and disconnect this. We're going to add one called the MF Chroma Keyer. 
Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect emissive color to emissive color and then we're going to connect opacity to opacity. It's grayed out right now but don't worry I'll explain it to you later and then also connect this opacity over to opacity mask. So you see this is very simple. You just have three nodes here and we connect RGB to input color, emissive color to emissive color, and then we've connected opacity to opacity, and then opacity to opacity mask. These are grayed out, but don't worry, I'll explain to you why I'm doing it this way. With this node selected here, look down at the bottom left where we have our blend mode. Go ahead and click that and we're going to change it to translucent. Go ahead and close this window for now. Click yes. Next we're going to build the blueprint for this texture plane and this will allow us to then bring our video feed and have it appear here. So we need to first create a blueprint to do that. In the upper right, let's rename this. I'm going to call it Actor 1 Plane. And then I'm going to click this Blueprint button. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click Create Blueprint. Once you have this window open, Go ahead and click on this event graph. We're not going to use these two nodes at the moment, but we'll be using this. Click this little arrow here, drag it out, and then search for find network source by name okay and then we're going to create a conditional so we're gonna look for branch now we're going to create the start receiver and it's not there. This tells me that we need to add the component before we'll be able to see it. So come on over here where it says add component and type in NDI and you will see that there is an NDI receiver component. Go ahead and add that. Now when we do this type in start receiver you'll see that it's now available All right, so we're just about done here. What we need to do is we need to find the source name. So the way we do that is we open up our NDI Tools Studio Monitor and we'll be able to see exactly what the name of the source is. So we're going to type it exactly as it shows in our Studio Monitor. Okay, I've got my NDI Studio Monitor open here, and if I click on this hamburger menu and look at the streams that are available on my network, I'll look for Display 3. This is on a computer on my network called Ninja Omen. So we're going to bring this into Unreal Engine. Notice that the name of this particular stream is right here. It's called Ninja-Omen and I believe this is case sensitive so um, there's also a space here and then a parenthesis display 3 and then a closing parenthesis. And you don't have to type this. If you, want to, if you want to see the actual name you can also click here and it's also here but 
this is a this is the format that you need to type this in I'll just minimize this okay the name of my stream is ninja omen space parenthesis display three parenthesis and I hit enter and everything looks good and be sure to compile each time you make any changes in here just hit this you'll see a question mark which means it needs to be compiled so when I click that looks like we have an error it says must have an input wired into it okay yeah so that means we need to connect this here so we need this connection information to go into this in connection information so let's try compiling again and there you go no errors okay so we're good let's close this okay let's go ahead and test this to see if our video shows up here go ahead and hit play and nothing okay so what could have gone wrong let's take a look okay here's our plane I'm gonna move it down a little bit Let's take a look at the blueprint again. If you come over here, just click on this hyperlink here. Now, what we need to do is we need to click on our component here. And if we look to the right panel, we see that NDI media source is blank. So we need to select our receiver that we created in the content browser so we're gonna choose this okay now you'll see the icon there that means it was successful let's go ahead and compile this again and you get the green check close it and let's try it one more time you notice how the camera jumped from your preview I'm gonna show you how you can set it to where your camera will just stay stationary and not jump around when you hit play if you click this little arrow here next to the play button go ahead and choose current camera location and this will prevent the camera from jumping around when you hit play Here is our girl dancing here. She's sideways, so we're going to have to rotate this plane. And then also we're going to have to stretch it the other direction. So let's go ahead and do that. Select this plane. Rotate it. 90 degrees and then let's widen it or scale it and I'm just gonna eyeball it here that looks good it's snapping right now if you don't want it to snap you can turn off the snapping and force scale I believe it's no this one so if I untick this you'll notice that it lets me scale without snapping okay looks like we have some work to do here this came in and it's looking a little funky um, so what do we do if you search the web you'll find all kinds of different ways to solve this problem here 
you can use composure, you can use different keying methods. I'm going to show you how I fix this. I tried using composure, however, composure doesn't seem to be compatible with the NDI media texture. I'm going to show you how I solve this problem. We're going to create an instance of this material. And when we create an instance, you're going to see that it's going to give you a bunch of options that the original material doesn't have. When we open this, we see this node structure here. So let me show you what happens when we create a, an instance of this material. If you right click and then choose create material instance. Okay, so it creates a copy of this. However, when you open this, it's a little different. So what we're going to see is we're going to see the parameters that are set here for this chroma keyer. So the parameters for this chroma keyer only appear if you create an instance of this material. That was something that I had no idea about. I just was experimenting and just kind of by accident landed on this and so that's what you need to do you need to create an instance of this now what's cool about this is we have our original texture here or material here and it is set to translucent okay so translucent a translucent material has some limitations it can't cast shadows however it is different in using masked because what this allows you to do is it allows you to have a really nice clean edge when you key this versus using masked where you'll get a fairly pixelated edge so there's a trade-off so a masked texture is going to allow you to have shadows. You can cast shadows with a masked texture or blend mode and with a translucent one a translucent material will not allow you to to cast shadows. At least I wasn't able to figure out how to do that. So if you know how to do that then please share because um, I was beating my head against the wall trying to figure that one out. Now if we look at this instance, you'll see these parameters here. What we need to do is we need to choose the green that will key this background out. So a quick way to do it is to click on this color swatch here. Well, we have to activate it first by putting a check mark on it. And then we'll be able to open this color swatch here and you can mess around with this or the easiest way that I found is if you take this color picker and then you come over here and just click this green right here and you'll notice that if I rotate this around it did a pretty good job of just keying out this green here already so We'll see what happens. You see that there's still there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done because you can still see this light gray that's appearing here. So I'll show you how to fix that next. I'm just gonna show you quickly what this looks like. Okay, we'll, we need to make sure we save this so we don't lose our our work here. Right, once it updates, you'll notice that it nothing has really happened here. The reason is because right now it is referencing this material and this material has the gray background. This is the original one. What we want is this material. So the simplest thing to do is to just take this, drag and drop it right under there. All right, so just like magic, there you go. You have your key and it, I mean, it looks pretty good but if we deselect 
you'll see that there's this light kind of shadow here um, and we're gonna get rid of that so let's open this back up and I'm gonna rotate this so I can see what I'm doing so now there's a couple of things that you can do to get rid of this and I'm gonna focus on this alpha control here I'm gonna tick these things on okay and then just play around with this you don't have to do, be too drastic with it but you'll see this start to disappear once you start messing with this so let's check the luma mask I'm just gonna slide it left and right and you'll see what happens so if you go too far things will start to disappear on on her shirt or you know different areas of the bright areas one way that would make it easier to key this properly is if you come down here and look at alpha preview here if you turn this on and then just change this to a 1 which basically means full opacity you can see what's happening here so I'm gonna adjust this to where it's just pure white where you can't see any of this extra garbage here so I'm gonna keep adjusting this until until I get as clear of a picture as I can I'm not gonna mess with this one but I'll check out this intensity floor here and you, you can see this is making the alpha mask grow or shrink a little bit so I'm just trying to get rid of this this little spot right here so if I go this direction with it right there it seemed to go away now we'll turn this off just to check how well our key looks it looks pretty good all right I guess I'm I'm okay with that so we'll just hit save and let's take a look not too bad okay so I'm gonna position her so that her feet are close to the ground as possible Wow, I'm really far off the ground here. Okay, so all right, I'm going to turn off the snapping. Okay, I want to get her as close to the ground as possible. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and hit play. So it looks like her feet are passing through the ground, so I'm gonna raise her up a little bit more like that. maybe just a little bit more okay that looks pretty good so if we look if we come in closer um, you'll see that there's still a little bit of noise there in her pants so we can we can try to get rid of that so if I hit escape, it's going to freeze this frame right here and then it should allow me to fix this noise here. So I'm going to come back to my instance, double clicked on it, and then I'm just going to adjust this some more just to see if I could get rid of those 
little spots there. Okay, so here we're starting to see some of this come back. So we're just going to keep playing with this until until it looks until it looks right. Did that do it? Looks like that did it. Are there any other spots that I see? Nope, that looks pretty good. Let's zoom out here. So it's pretty clear all around her. The edges are pretty clean. Okay, let's play it again. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. Looks pretty good. Okay, so you'll notice that there is no shadow and with a translucent material I've read and I've been told um, that translucent materials do not project shadows um, even though there are a ton of different parameters that seem to allude to the fact that you can project shadows with a translucent material but I've tried and it it hasn't worked so I don't really know what the exact parameters are to be able to do that but I've come up with a sort of hack that will allow me to cast shadows and it's kind of an old old school way of doing this so I'm gonna show you that next the idea here is to use another instance of this video okay so we're gonna duplicate the plane and then we're gonna have it laid exactly on top of the current plane but we're gonna change the type of texture that it is so we're gonna change it into a masked material that way the mask material will have the same alpha mask basically and we'll be able to cast shadows but the problem is is that because the masked version is gonna have a pixelated edge it's gonna make our key look really ugly so what we need to do is to figure out a way to then hide the masked layer however we still need to allow it to cast a shadow what I'm going to do is create a copy of this plane here so just select it hit control C and then control V and it should create a perfect copy of this so if I hide this you'll see that it's in the exact same position okay so I'm gonna hide this first one for now so that I don't accidentally mess with it and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a duplicate of this particular texture I'm gonna create an instance here so I created an instance of the instance okay and let's take a look it should look exactly the same the reason why I didn't duplicate or create an instance of the original material is because we made changes to the instance and I need those same exact parameters to carry over to the new instance so that's why I created an instance of the instance so everything is the same only thing that we need to change in here is if we come down to this area here where we have material property overrides and this is the important part of this is we're going to enable this blend mode here and then it says translucent I'm gonna take this and change it to masked okay and immediately you see it it casted a shadow here in our preview so you don't see anything here yet because we need to still apply this new texture onto this new plane 
close this. Actually, just save it first. I'll close it. And next, you'll take this and drop it right onto here. And instantly, you'll see the shadow casted there. All right. So now, if we turn this on, I'll turn on the original plane. And you see, it looks it looks pretty good, um, but here because it's overlapped exactly, the pixels are gonna kind of go crazy here. Um, so let's just play this and see what it looks like. Okay, now you may not be able to to tell, but to me, there's some weird things going on here. Um, you can almost kind of see the other texture coming through and then the edges of the edges are not as clean they're semi pixelated and it may be harder for you to tell because the video is probably going to get compressed but um, trust me on this this is not what you want the shadows there which is great and it looks great but you're going to want to figure out how to turn off that particular layer without it affecting your um, your translucent layer. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape again and I'm going to show you if you just l simply turn this layer off and you hit play again, we'll see what happens. Nothing. Um, even though you hit it here when you hit play it turns it back on so that'll drive you crazy let's figure out a different way to do this okay now if you select this you're gonna see that a whole bunch of options are available here so there's a couple things we need to do in order for us to be able to have the shadow casted but then hide the actual object that's casting the shadow so we don't want to see the actual object we just want its shadow go ahead and turn on this layer and we'll turn off this layer so we can see our shadow here actually you know what we'll turn this one on too just so we can we can tell that this one's messed up because it's flashing here let's look for the lighting section if you're new to Unreal you're not gonna see a whole lot of options here because there's a little tiny arrow here that is the advanced arrow and if you click on it then you get a whole bunch of things that you can click here you gotta make sure that these things are checked right here these um, dynamic shadow and static shadow and then cast shadow so like if I uncheck cast shadow you'll see the shadow goes away and then what we need to do is here it says actor hidden in game okay so I'm gonna check this all right okay so the shadow is still not showing up so let's take a look at another option here that we're missing it's called hidden shadow so if I tick this there you go our shadow is there and our original object is gone okay you don't see it anymore because uh, we've hidden it we specified it to be hidden Where's that? Here. So that's visible in the viewport, and this is hidden in the viewport. And this one, actor hidden in game, means that the actor will not appear when the game actually starts. So let's take a look. Looks pretty good. We have nice clean edges on our key 
shadow looks great everything is looking nice alright so that's pretty much it and now if we want a second stream we just have to repeat this process again uh, I'm not gonna show it to you again um, I'm gonna pause this video and I'm gonna create basically reduplicate this whole thing over again and then you'll be able to have your second video appear here before we move on I wanted to go back and show you why we needed to connect opacity to both opacity and opacity mask so when we're using translucent we need to connect opacity so in this instance here we're using translucency so our material can be translucent now because we need a shadow we also need to make sure that we have a connection to this opacity mask which is why I connected this to opacity mask because our instance of the instance here has an override of mask so if we don't have this connection here then when we're using this particular material that's masked then there won't be a connection here so that's gonna break things and won't work properly so you can experiment with that if you just wanna find out what happens another thing that we need to do is we need to make this second actor here a child of the original one and we want to do that because if we happen to move this these two are independent right now so if we move this one then it'll leave the other one behind so there you see our shadow just stayed behind so what we have to do is just drag this actor here on top of the original one and then you'll see that this one now becomes a child of this one so if we close this now when we move it our shadow should move along with the original object alright so I've created my second NDI stream here and you see this woman playing the violin I've essentially gone through those steps again to create this new NDI stream so I didn't simply just go in and duplicate any of this stuff I just went ahead and did it from scratch again so that way I can avoid having any issues like for instance if I were to duplicate this actor one here the blueprint won't change and so you're just gonna be overriding stuff and it's just gonna be a big mess so just do it over again from step one um, once you do this a few times you'll start to memorize it and it'll be quicker so that just helps you to avoid some problems what you might want to do at this point is to just do some cleanup so um, you can create some folders in here if you want to and then just start dropping these things in there because it starts to get a little messy as as we're going along so I'll just create some folders I'll create a materials folder and I'll drop I'm holding shift as I click these and I'm just gonna drop them in here Okay, and then I'm going to create another folder and I'll call it maps and then I'll move these ones into here you don't have to do this I just want to do this to show you that you can I'll just call this one NDI 
Stick these ones in here. And then create another one. Call it blueprints. Put these guys in here. And finally, I'll do I'll call it media texture. Media textures. Oh, no spaces. Media textures. And move these in here. Okay. So that's it. Let's uh, play this and see what this looks like. Okay, and there you have it. I'm going to do something here just for fun. I'm going to create a platform for our violinist to play on. So I'm going to create a cube. And I'm just going to set her on top of it. Maybe I'll make it lower. Just to make it a little more interesting. It's nice to be able to demonstrate the shadows casting there. Alright. I think I'm pretty happy with this. Let's play it and see what we got. Cool. All right, so there you have it. You have two NDI streams coming in from your network. It could be any source, really. You could have a camera that's shooting live green screen. You can have pre-rendered assets, whatever you want. So this is just a demonstration on how you can do that. There's one last thing that I wanted to show you and that is the ability to color correct uh, either of these videos that are coming in here all you have to do is go to your material so for example I want this girl to kind of have the same kind of um, lighting that the violinist has so if I come in here and I go to this translucent material, which is our visible material, and I look here at the color correction section, I can then activate these things. Here, there's these options here. and then you can proceed to do your color correction so I'm just gonna do this real quick I'm not gonna spend too much time here but I just wanted to demonstrate this to you for example I can come in here and adjust these settings so as I'm sliding this you'll notice nothing is happening is because by default uh, nothing is being applied currently but if we look down here where it says here 7 visualization there's a little tick box here for color correction amount and so you have to activate this and what this will allow you to do is to apply a certain amount of whatever adjustments that you've made in here so for example if I slide this up then you'll start to see what's being affected there um, like that So you get the idea. If you need, if you needed to um, correct any part of the video that has come in here, you could do that by doing this. All right. And if you don't like any of these results, all you have to do is just hit this reset button. 
and that gets rid of everything sets it back to its default settings well that's it for this part of the demonstration I just wanted to show you how you could bring in two different NDI streams and then be able to key them without using OBS or some other external keyer. Now we can stretch this further by adding a virtual camera in here. So um, at this point, if you don't have an HTC Vive tracker or have no interest in doing that, you're done. You can stop the video. Um, but if you're interested in learning more about using a virtual camera and um, using your HTC Vive tracker then stick around and I'll show you how to do that okay so this is the bonus part of this video I am going to show you how to quickly add a virtual camera in here so that you can use your HTC Vive tracker to control it just a disclaimer I learned how to do this from a YouTube channel there's a, a really talented guy by the name of Richard Franson and I don't know if I'm butchering his last name but uh, you can check him out just search YouTube uh, I'll post a link in the description as well uh, he has some really great videos there and um, jump over there and, and check out his full tutorial he goes way way more in depth than I do and if you guys are interested in using a deck link and you want to learn how to use genlock and syncing and all of that he goes really in depth into all that stuff so definitely drop by over there and check out his video what I'm going to show you is a very streamlined version of what he showed in his video. Now let's put together our virtual camera. First we need to create some basic empty actors here. I'm going to drag a couple of these in here. For the first one, I'm going to name it scene mover the second one I'm gonna name it camera tracker and then I'm gonna move camera tracker into scene mover next I'm gonna click on cinematic and choose cine camera actor and I'm gonna position it right over this sphere here I'm going to rename this to live camera and this will be a child of camera tracker next we're gonna create a blueprint for this camera tracker here with this camera tracker selected go ahead and hit the blueprint add script button and then hit create blueprint Now we'll jump over to the event graph and then we'll start with our first node which is get tracked device position and orientation. Next we're going to set the out orientation to combined rotators. Next, we're going to set the relative rotation. And then our last one is set relative location. And we'll choose this scene root, default scene root. Connect the out position to the new position and then take this event tick here and we'll connect it to the set relative rotation. 
All right, so this is what your blueprint should look like. Fairly simple. And the last part of all of this is the device ID. So the device ID is actually the ID of your HTC Vive tracker or controller, whichever you're going to be using. So in my case, I'll be using a tracker. And if you don't know what this number is, you can just take a guess. Usually, if you don't have you know more than, say, three or four devices, then you can just make a wild guess and try to figure out which one. It's, it's generally um, assigned by the order which your controllers are turned on. But I found a tool that you can easily reference to see which tracker um, to put in there. So if you come to the Steam VR application here and then click this little menu, you go to Developer and Web Console. Now you see this window here. This is a log of everything that's happening behind the scenes in the Steam VR world. Um, when I turn on a device, controller, or whatever, it's going to show me the ID of that specific controller. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to turn on one of these trackers and see what happens. Okay. Now one of my trackers is on. And you'll see in this green here a log that shows status warning added and this is the serial number of this particular tracker I believe um, or some sort of identification number I don't think that's actually the serial number but um, what's important here is this index number which is 7 so that's the number that I'm going to plug into our blueprint jumping back over to our blueprint I'm going to enter the number 7 here because that's the number that the console showed me. Now there may be other ways to figure that out but that was the most accurate way that I knew how. We're gonna compile and then I'm gonna switch over to this viewport and I'm gonna hit simulation and if things are working, this uh, one of these um, spheres should move. Okay, nothing's happening. All right, what I need to do though is I need to set up my um, parenting. So I'm going to move this camera tracker into scene mover and then I'm going to move live camera into camera tracker okay so we have this little hierarchy here and let's try this again okay still nothing What if we hit play? Okay. Well, um, hmm, that's interesting. Okay, by default, the camera mesh hidden in game is switched on which means it won't be visible when we turn on our game or when we when we hit start so let's untick this and then let's hit play again and okay it's because I didn't turn on my 
uh, lighthouses. So let me switch those on really quick and hopefully things will get moving. Alright, so I had to do a little bit of troubleshooting. Um, apparently, I did not turn on my lighthouses, and so I couldn't track anything. I've since switched them on, and as you can see here, the lighthouses are on. There are actually two trackers, um, apparently, that are turned on at the moment. But I've got the index for one of my trackers through the console here and you can see where it has shown up here so now if I hit play there you see it my HTC Vive tracker is now controlling my virtual camera so I'm moving about inside my little room here and what you really want to be able to see is what this camera is seeing so let me show you how to set up the sequencer so that um, you can actually activate the, the camera's view so let's stop that now if we come to the top here and click on cinematics we can add a level sequence and I'm just gonna leave the default name here okay so with this sequencer open you can see there's not really anything here I'm gonna take this camera here and I'm gonna drag it onto this blank area here on the left okay so now this is gonna give me a timeline of my camera so I want to be able to see what this camera is actually seeing so I'm gonna hit this um, this little camera track here okay so now what we're seeing is a representation of what the virtual camera is actually seeing so let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens So here I am, I've got my HTC Vive tracker and sorry it's a little shaky but um, you probably want to have some sort of shoulder mount or a uh, gimbal or something more stable than your bare hands. So even if you put this on a, a heavier camera of some sort, um, this would be a lot more stabilized. So I'm going to get up and walk around the room here and see if I can get a better view of this. Okay, so I'm sort of in the back of my room now and just kind of moving the tracker around the room. So I'm walking towards this lady and I look down at her feet, back up, I'll focus on the girl dancing. Sorry for the shakiness. Alright. So that's it. That's uh, that's basically how you set this up. It's not overly complicated, but you just kind of have to know. Um, let me move my mouse pointer here. You just have to know what to add to those nodes to get this working properly. Fortunately, we have a really great virtual production community out there that is sharing this information out there. So it's just a matter of digging 
and finding those bits of information that's going to help you achieve the goal that you're trying to get to. So um, I hope you guys learned something here and found some value in this video and I wish you all the best of luck on your projects and your journey on learning this virtual production stuff. It's new and, and it's exciting and um, it's fast moving so jump in, um, experiment and share your knowledge with everybody so that we can get things moving even faster. Alright, well, leave me a comment um, if this was useful to you or if you have any suggestions on how I can make my videos better, um, if there's anything that you guys have questions about that I can um, help answer for you, I'm, I'm glad to help out. And um, be safe.